somebody mention that to us. Oh, we have one, two. Oh, we do two beers. I don't know. What the hell is uh, wrong with you people? Well, now I need to figure out how far back this goes to see how far back we need to go. Oh, nuts. Uh, well, I guess let's briefly recover the first part of the episode just in case. So Back to the notes. Uh, all right. So the Chang, what is it? The Chang? The Changli Nemeca. Nemeca. So the Changli Nemeca is a EV that you can buy from Alibaba. And uh, Jalopnik reviewed it as they bought one and somehow got it through here before COVID happened. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I buy a lot of little electronics from Alibaba, and they take at least a month to get here. Yeah, it took them forever to get it, but they got it. Um, so what's really cool about this is it's $1,200, and it's better than any golf cart. <laughs> and it's $1,200. And it's EV for $1,200, so it's got the same front suspension design as a Jimny, basically. I still can't figure out if it comes with batteries. That's kind of a big deal, but at the same time, not like, that big a deal. Whatever. It's like, but, it's I mean, like you were saying, it's got alloy wheels. It's got a glass windshield. It's that got a steel is curved. body. Curved glass. Yeah, it's it, not just like a Model T plate glass. Yeah, no, this machine. is a curved glass windshield. Um, it's all painted, even underneath. It has, this has actually features that Mitsubishi doesn't have. Because Mitsubishi doesn't paint their engine bays. They don't? No, and these guys do. They primer their engine bays at Mitsubishi. Well, I was going to say, everything on this thing is painted. Like, actually painted. Oh, wait, this is the... That's the second article. i got to yeah, pull that's... up the one that you linked in. Oh, no. <laughs> that's fine. But, um... So, yeah, the front suspension is the same, uh, like, solid, like, traction bar design as, like, a Jimny. Okay. It so uses... it's got solid axles front and yep, back, Yep, solid right? axles front and back. uses coil suspension and has alloy wheels, like we said before. Dang. has, like, a three inch wide tire on it so it's like yeah they look like moped tires yeah pretty much and they're also i noticed that they're curved like moped tires yeah <laughs> so cornering probably not the best no probably terrible it does have a, a steering rack instead of a steering gear which yeah, looks actually like it's out of a side by side it's pretty yeah good looking. It, it really surprised me and we compared it like to like a jimny underneath like it's very similar except for the kingpin which it says here is model t-esque yes um but the thing is, with golf carts, you also get kingpins. But at golf carts, you also have two leaf springs that have like, a big problem with them rolling under themselves and not. Oh, it's like a spring. Corvair without yeah, the uh, exactly. limiting. Yeah, shims and then or they also only have one strut on uh, on golf carts. So golf cart suspension blows ass. Like, how do they do that? Uh, it just bounces forever. Like you're. It's it's really <laughs> dumb the way that like, that's like golf carts kind of suck. <laughs> Uh, and this, I'm noticing, has multiple shocks on it. I also, its yes, spring. it's got multiple shocks. And, like, really, like, this needs to be stated. It has control arms. Yep. That is, like, night and day difference for the handling of this vehicle it compared look to that a golf bad. cart. I no, mean, like, other than the straight up and down manual brake pedal and the fact that some of these welds look like to be maybe a little on the small side. You, Yeah, I mean, if you're going to buy it, it's a $1,200 car from Alibaba, so obviously you're going to put that on a lift and double check everything. <laughs> maybe add a couple more pieces of steel. Yeah, add some welding <laughs> to that for sure. And then put some undercoating on there. Yeah. yeah, this motor, I think you were saying it's got a plastic body on yeah, it. it's got a plastic body on the motor. Uh, it is... It's that, got, is, that is definitely the same motor that they put on big vacuum pumps you buy from Alibaba. Yeah, so I mean, like it, it's, it, but that's the thing is, it's easy to replace. That's and true. Cheap. Yep. Um, it also has, yeah, shock is a spring and separated shock system in the rear, yep. which I think is really cool. Um, the electronics were installed with care. I can see. Yeah, they just kind of like <laughs> threw the bus controller and everything, <laughs> just like. I see one ha- self tapping screw, so that's probably good. It, at least it won't fly out on a hard <laughs> left turn. Um. But the batteries. brakes, I think, are actually oh. really cool. Oh, and yeah, look at that. Yeah, the batteries are all wired in series with a uh, piece of cardboard. I think, them. yeah, corrugated, professional corrugated battery isolator. Likely from the box that the batteries arrived in. <laughs> oh, is this a fashion spec? That little thing right there says fashion on yes, the side. Yes, this is the fashion uh, car. I wonder how many different trim levels so they've got on the, this thing. So with the brakes on this, it's all mechanical. So they have this, like, bell crank that rotates to the right. Mm-hmm. And as it rotates to the right... It tightens up this other rod that pulls on the drum brakes and okay. tightens them up. So it, it, it's got basically like 1920s car suspension oh, or brakes, rather. So it's you get your old pre-war thing, uh, but without having a pre-war car. 
and no carburetor that will inevitably break. That's true. I mean, the, uh, all these electronics are, they, they mass produce this stuff, and like MOSFETs are MOSFETs. Like, this will be just fine. Yeah. I mean, your, your batteries are going to die at some point, but it's got a computer power cord to charge it. I think it's also huge that it's, the batteries are normal car batteries. So you can yeah, actually, AGM. I think what's really important about that is as opposed to uh, 10680 is like the normal lithium 18650. one. 18650. 18650, sorry. The 18650s, like those can kill you if you do it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Lead acid is very tolerant. <laughs> very difficult to kill yourself with a lead acid battery compared to a lithium ion battery. <laughs> that is 100% true. I think that's a massive like boon to this vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it's simple, but that makes it cheap. I mean, lithium, you have to have charge controllers. You could retrofit this for sure. Yeah, but. totally. Uh, and then also it's got a 1 to 8 uh, gear reduction on it, so you can actually... So like, the motor spins very quickly. So you have probably good torque. Yeah, you, you've got some you good torque on for, it. Yeah. I, I think it holds four people, right? Yeah, it holds four people. It's got yeah. one horsepower. Check those welds. Yeah, check those welds before you do that. And then, yeah, like you said, the charging port uh, is just a normal computer. Computer power cord. Yep, and I think what's really cool about that is if this had some proprietary like thing that was like unique to this like bespoke to this one model mm -hmm. um it would inevitably break and be screwed this is actually designed to be used i think that this is that's very important especially the fact that like if you have a golf cart there's all sorts of bullshit that you have to go through that like club cart like oh yeah club car Getting makes you do parts for that i'd rather shop on alibaba yeah and then the body itself, I mean, the floor is a, p a solitary piece of corrugated steel, of, like, diamond plate steel. So well, I think diamond plate's aluminum, so this might actually be rust-free. So, okay, well, I mean, or it would, maybe it's aluminum it's welded to steel. to a steel chassis, Which is, yeah. like, gonna just explode. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be. Dissimilar metals never have any problems next yeah. to each other. I'm sure it's but fine. But what's also really cool is that this whole body is stamped steel. The white over fenders are stamped steel. Mm-hmm. The bumpers are steel, the front end steel, everything's steel and glass. So like real metal. So you know, if you're like driving around here at Motorplex mm -hmm. and somebody bumps into you, like you're not gonna instantly die. Like there's a chance that you're gonna be okay. That's true. So I mean, yeah, it's probably you're probably better off in this than you would be in a golf cart or like a Power Wheels. Yeah. Oh, so it's <laughs> it's safer than a, <laughs> it's safer than a golf cart. Also, it's got heat. It has heat? Yes, it's got an electric heater How in it. How the hell? Dude, the, oh, that's got to be ruthlessly inefficient. It's awesome, though. I, <laughs> it's got heat. Did you notice it has LED projector headlights? Yeah. <laughs> this thing's, like, really, really cool. It's like a Corolla, man. Like, this has more stuff on it. This is honestly better equipped than most Mitsubishis. And <laughs> has roughly the same build quality. Uh, because, and only slightly less power. Yeah, only slightly less power. But, I mean, the seats, uh, if you scroll down, those, they talk about the build quality issues. So, like, the, the seat fabrics are comically stapled together. Yeah, I saw, like, the uh, the felt door molding that's seals. Actually the, and... That's actually ABS plastic that oh, instead of it? molding correctly, they just cut holes in oh. it and just bent okay, it. Okay, whatever. That's, I'm sure it's, <laughs> it's whatever. That's probably fine. Who cares? It's $1,200. I was going to say, the fact that you have something that is put together like if they sold you that thing as a kit to put it together how cheap would that be yeah exactly we had 200 dollars thing this is 1200 dollars. you have a coil over three link front suspension a with a, the rear differential that's a differential mm -hmm. it's not just like a chain oh yeah it's not a model goes, t where yeah. it drove one wheel yeah exactly like they were they were totally expecting like a drive motor and a chain that goes to one wheel oh yeah like no this one has a differential <laughs> Uh, or like got, a direct drive at least, so like no diff. But. Exactly. It's got four single piece lug nuts. Mm -hmm. So do you know what the difference in a single piece and two piece lug nut is? Where they have like a bolt and then they put a little metal cap over it. Oh gross. And that metal cap breaks and yeah. then it just spins. Yeah, the uh, the Tesla Model S shipped with those until two thousand sixteen. My car was a fifteen. This has better quality lug nuts than the Model S. Than the Model with. S. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, I hated those. Um, yeah, that Chrome man, it just came apart. And then yeah, and then like you said, uh, projector beam LED headlights. That's just nuts. Like <laughs> for twelve hundred bucks. But this thing is a parts car. <clears throat> like this, this is better than. Honestly, objectively, this car has better creature conference than my Civic had. Like, there's more actual car here. Than my Civic had when it was when it was new. The Civic was a better car to drive, and that's like a thousand percent better. But like this, objectively, as like but like a maintenance form... departments should be buying these. Yeah, this is great. Like this is a really amazing car. This should be like yeah, parts departments should buy this. Like 
if you live in like an area like if you have like a garage here, mm -hmm. you should have it. It would be perfect, other than the fact you have to store it. But it's not big. No, it's not big at all. Because if you actually see the uh, picture of them like next to it when it first arrived, it's not that huge. It's definitely like the size of a golf cart. Couldn't help but notice you also have Kia Nero EV ads. On yeah, your, I do uh, on your so, page. Kia's really. Uh, Scott already bought one. Go away. <clears throat> Scott, perhaps you should have bought one of these. Oh, he did. <laughs> There's a debacle I think he wants to talk about at some point, too. But anyway, I want to quickly touch on my first story, and then I'm, I'll go to the second one I wonder one what kind of debacles you would have. Oh, he's already had several. Buying one of these, though. Because of the dealer experience. Oh, God. You know, this doesn't have a shit dealer, it, either. It's because so it doesn't have Scott, a dealer. Scott should it would have been better off with a Chang Lee. Oh, God. <laughs> there you um, go, Scott. Top tip from Carbitrage. So we probably just lost one of our longtime patrons. Um, so last week I went with Peter, our friend, and his girlfriend to one of the good drive-in movie theaters. We have five in Minnesota, but yeah. only three are worth visiting. Uh, I have always enjoyed going to those. I don't go enough just because you really have to go on a peak night. You have to plan for it, and if it's too hot or too buggy, you don't really want to do it. But I had a great time, watched Inside Out. It was lovely. I want to go again. Um, I found last week, this is actually kind of old news, but... Uh, Walmart is partnering with Tribeca, which is a company that uh, owns a lot of film equipment, projectors, yeah. things like that, and screens, and they're going to turn 160 of their uh, U.S.-based Walmart stores' parking lots into drive-in movie theaters, at least temporarily. So it's to be just like going to Valley High, except now you have a domestic disturbance happening next to you. The police are being called. There's like 100 trucks playing Old Country Road, Yep. and it smells like beer, and somehow... Somebody has a giant Trump flag directly in the way of the movie. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So all the people that are ruining Valley High will be there at the Walmart, and then I'll have a better time. I'm really Valley excited there. to go to Valley High now. I know, it's like, going to be great. I really want to enjoy this again. Like, but it's, it's perfect for, like, you're outside, you can stay far away from people. It's perfect. So yeah. drive-in movies should be doing really well right now, other than the fact that they kind of have to cut attendance to comply with CDC regulations. But either way, I thought that was That's actually really cool. I'm really, super really happy to hear about that. So um, now our entire thing is out of loop because I did mine first and yep. you did yours. So now i got to talk about special financing vehicles, which, lo and be praised, they're dead. FCA acts as the Dodge Journey and the Grand Caravan for 2021. Thank God. Wait, they still made the Grand Caravan? They did. Um, I think it was only sold in the uh, CV spec, though, which is the glassless one. For, oh, my God. Yeah. So they were still making them, I know. How? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not important. Uh, and then I should have had another link in here, too. I, I guess I don't, but uh, I believe they are also... No, you do. Where? The, right below it, you have Autoblog. Okay, yeah. Durango. I thought I had two in there. This is kind of cool. So they're getting rid of their special financing vehicle and putting in a very And they're cool putting truck. a 700-horsepower engine in the Durango, finally. I just we wish, had the Trackhawk. I just wish they saw a 15-inch wheel on the Durango, because I like to party. I don't think you could stop one of these with the brake under a 15-inch wheel. You At could. least not multiple times. You could stop it. Once. <clears throat> Friction exists. Well, I mean, you look at a your NASCAR tires, brake disc, you can stop a car. Your, your tires are touching the ground. That creates friction that will eventually stop the vehicle. <laughs> anyway, the Durango is based on the Mercedes GL. The Hellcat cool. engine's good. All right. That's neat. So, yay. That is actually Bye-bye really cool. special financing. Hello, 700 horsepower Durango. So, I've learned that uh, Dodge Journeys, uh, their vehicle, the vehicles match the people that buy it. Yes. They, they are exactly as well built as you think they are. The Changli Namekka is a better built vehicle <laughs> than the Durango. Definitely has more steel. Or not the it. Durango, but the, the, the Journey. Uh, journey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awful. Um, well, it's actually really cool. I'm really happy to see that Dodge, you know, always they're putting V8s into things. It'd be really cool if they put V8s into um, the um, Bronco. Into the Bronco. Why do I see a 400 horsepower Bonneville land speed streamliner on my screen? Uh, 400 mile per hour. Sorry. And sorry, I'm pulling up the link for your next story early. What the hell is <laughs> wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> How many times did it bring up this so link? So if you're not watching on the video version, I've just pulled up a bring a trailer link to a 400 mile per hour Bonneville land speed streamliner. <laughs> and it is supposed to be a link to a eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> for Honda. 
How exactly that? And anyway, let's look at the Streamliner real quick. It's currently going for $18,000. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, that's actually really cool. We can talk about it. It has two Cadillac V8s with each having twin Garrett turbochargers. Air-shifted Liberty five-speed transmission. Oh, God. Yep. Built in 2009. Wow, this is actually pretty cool. 16 fuel injectors, fast engine management, carbon fiber brakes. It's pretty wild. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a Bonneville Streamliner on Bring a Trailer. Oh, like. you know it's fast because it has all aluminum wheels. Yeah. <laughs> no no tire. Yeah. It's really, really, really cool. Back. CAD come. Oh, my God. Those are big engines. God, that's th that thing's so rad. Can you imagine? Ugh. I'm surprised it only goes 400 miles an hour. It Triple disc clutch. That's, I love that That's thing. cool. That car's cool as hell. I just want like an empty one of those. Oh, it's actually done a record too. Yeah. Wow. So, 408 wow. miles an hour. Uh, anyway, so let me actually find your real link now. If you yeah, put yeah, it in I there. put it in right below. <laughs> I love how confused you were about why that was on the <laughs> screen. I have a new phone, so it's been doing that. New so, phone, who does? All right, yeah, I know, right? All right, so why don't you tell us about? All right. So, also speaking of world records, uh, the Speed Factory Racing EG Civic uh, was destroyed in its final uh, pass down the drag strip actually they were retiring it and they wanted to try and reset the uh world record one more time Bummer. for the honda civic it was at the time that they crashed it it was running a 7.2 second quarter mile good christ <laughs> uh with a b series and oh my god which i think is amazing that they didn't even use a k in that uh they do have a k car and the k car is still slower and the b series world record is still faster than the k series um, but if you want to understand like how big of a deal this was for Honda people, um, this has been this car's been racing for twelve years. Wow! So like since the rebirth of import drag racing kind of started around the time of the recession, uh, this car has been in the game. So the first uh, like nine and eight second quarter miles were set by different racers. Uh, but this car really kind of took that from Tony Palo and just ran with it. Mm -hmm. And they've been really just moving the chains nonstop. Uh, and this actually was one of the very first outlaw style cars, which is basically a door slammer um, street chassis car. Like this car, if you could get this car to pass emissions, could drive on the street. Like that's what's so cool about it. Like everything works in it. It's got working headlights, working taillights. It's got doors that open and close. You know, it, it's as close to a uh, actual car you could get. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in 2012, 315, uh, 350 thousand mile Civic was the first car to run at 820. Awesome. It, then they continued that for a whole second over the course of 12 years. Wow. Also, was the first front wheel drive car ever to hit 200 miles an hour on a, on a quarter mile ever, uh, and they did it with again a factory chassis vehicle uh, with a bunch of miles on it with 350,000 miles. It was the first eight tens, eight twenties, eight second flat, like every issue of Honda tuning during the recession, mm -hmm. this car was in it doing something new. <laughs> you know, like even after Honda tuning went away, we were still hearing about this car, just like showing up and just like kicking ass and taking names. Luckily, uh, James Kemp, he is, Okay. He was giving a thumbs up in yeah. the image. So he's got, he, he's, I mean, he's not like, you know, going around doing ballet or anything, but he's got three <laughs> broken ribs, broken scapula, punctured lung, and bruised carotid artery. Other than the bruised carotid artery, none of that's life threatening. That bruised carotid artery, they just got him blood thinners. I think they think he's going to be okay because that could lead to a stroke if they <clears throat> didn't do that. Yeah, that'd be bad. That'd be really bad. Um, but yeah, so they've got. Speed Factory's other cars that they're racing, they've got EKs and stuff. Uh, there's rumors that there's a all-wheel drive uh, wagon van that they're going to start uh, moving the chains on all-wheel drive records <laughs> nice. with. But so <laughs> these are the records the Civic held at the time of its crash: fastest front-wheel drive car in the world, fastest Honda front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. Oh my God! <laughs> like the fastest Honda, period. <laughs> Uh, fastest H pattern manual transmission car in the world. So, like, everything fashion, this, all the Supras and everything are all 
like either sequential, sequential or, auto. or automatic or automatic valve body, some bullshit like that. Air this shifter. Is, yeah. This is like a real, actual, normal clutch pedal with a stick shift. Uh, world's quickest and uh, fastest stock unibody non wheelie barred front wheel drive car. So that one's got some weird things to it. Quickest and fastest mean actual trap time and well, ETN mile an hour. Yeah, ETN mile per hour. So it it was both of those. Also, it did all this without a wheelie bar. Uh, and even with wheelie barred cars, I, they're not that fast. Like, this this without a wheelie bar is still beating cars that should be faster than it. <laughs> um, this is the first to break into the 200 mile per hour barrier. Did a Honda Day, April 12th, 2014. Then it reset the world record two years later while also breaking into 200 miles an hour again. Uh, it was the first stock unibody non wheelie barred front wheel drive car to break into. 8.2, and 7.4. Um, like, they literally did everything. So, sorry, it wasn't a full second. It was eight-tenths of a second that they knocked the, like, the world record down with this car. So, and nobody, like, interjected in the meantime. No, like, they, they did that they sequentially. Like, there yeah. were people that were, like, on their tail, but they got every single one of those. And then again, I think the biggest thing about this, they did this with an engine, a, a B series engine that was originally built during the recession. Okay. And they were beating K series with a car with 350,000 miles on it. Like that is absolutely unbelievable. And then when they crashed it, mm -hmm. they crashed on the back half of the of the track. With how fast this car is going, I would be utterly shocked if they were going a mile per hour under 150 miles an hour mm -hmm. and when they hit the wall the car got nearly ripped in half because they uh they hit the right wall and it spun around and ripped the right rear off of the car because mm -hmm. it got hooked on the early exit the like the early okay. kind of exit to the track Oof. and yeah like that, <clears throat> that car that car really held up super well for what happened to it that so even good even when it went out, it went out in a blaze of glory. It did what it was supposed to. It kept James Kemp alive. This car is absolutely tremendous. I think even as it sits, should still be, you know, like preserved. Because this car... Well, it looks like the left side's fine-ish. Yeah, it's fine-ish. <laughs> Cut it in half, put it on the wall. But this car, like... There is a time when this car was faster than the world's fastest GTR. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that it's faster than any all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive Honda. Yeah, right. like completely, like, oh, and by, like, all-wheel drive, it's like a second faster than the fastest all-wheel drive car. And those cars can boogie. Yeah, and this one is just two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, and just completely dicks on everything. It's absolutely unbelievable when you see it. And most of it's back half. Cause the, 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 oh, yeah, I mean, your, your launch is, you're limited by the, physics and tire. The 60, there are cars, there are front-wheel drive cars that have better 60-foot times. But they're better 60-foot times because they do nothing on the back half. And this one, he was called the back half king because it would just – it would or the back half terror, I think was his name. Because, like, seriously, there were cars where they'd have a bus on him, and he'd pull him in the back, in the back half, even though, like – I can't believe the transmissions can take that, man. It's that's, that's really, always the biggest really thing cool. I'm sure this car has probably been through like a hundred transmissions, and it's like a four-speed dog box oh, okay. where you have to like stay in it. You just like don't even really push the clutch pedal down. You just okay. power so shift. So it's not it. a stock like no. GSR trans. No, it's not a stock <laughs> GSR trans. <laughs> oh, and it made like I think it made 2,000 horsepower. Good lord! <laughs> like it made something like that. I'm guessing like, boost by gear and everything, but yeah, that would make sense. But yeah, fi <clears throat> like fifth or fourth gear, yeah, two thousand horsepower. Like, and I'm assuming it's like one point eight or one point nine liters. It's two, but yeah. It is, oh god. <laughs> two oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. A thousand. A thousand. <clears throat> well, no, it was a it was a B eighteen, right. but bored out or stroked out to two liters. <laughs> Freaking piston <laughs> velocities, man! It was probably running like ninety pounds of boost or something. It was, it was absolutely insane, and yeah. A thousand horsepower per liter. It's just a cat, a absolutely ridiculous vehicle on every level. It's so cool. Leave it so, to Honda. We yeah. said this before. We'll say it again. Like <laughs> you can have your LS. <laughs> you can't touch a Honda as far as power density. Yeah, seriously. Like that's absolutely <laughs> untouchable. It's, you just can't beat that. Like it's just the coolest thing. Like, yeah, Honda guys. Like they really like. That's like making twelve thousand horsepower with your truck. Yeah, okay? seriously. It, it's literally that. Like if you made. 
So say you have a, a six, yeah, it, it, yeah, six liter LS. You'd have to have a, th- a twelve thousand horsepower mm-hmm. six liter LS that can be driven down the street to some degree. And you can put any component behind it that won't just immediately blow up. Yeah, and th- that's basically what this car has done. Is it's done that reliably and it's proven itself. And it's honestly the only Honda I'd ever bet on. And now see why you eulogized it. Yeah, that car deserved a eulogy when I heard it crash. Like that car, hundred percent needed a eulogy. So fair enough. Well, rest I've, in peace. I hope his Civic. carotid artery recovers. And yeah, it'd be cool if they even like lightly rebuilt the car just so they could store it. They they still have the car. Like they they've they've recovered what they could. I don't know what their plan is with it. Maybe they'll do a tube chassis with it. And just like because I know currently the factory chassis record for Honda is faster than the tube chassis record. So maybe they just make this car into a tube chassis. And then just go and just run like, it a couple more times. <laughs> and just looks like, like the engine and stuff survived, so... Yeah, more or less. I mean, it, you would, you'd want to rebuild that engine because that kind of G-force on an engine, uh, like, that kind of G-force on a rollover, like, if you have a rollover, like, the G-forces will break your engine, but that not, would not be... Not if you had 500 of Barth. That's true, but... That was fine. <laughs> Smoked a little bit when I got it running, but it's fine. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about... Yeah, it's, it's dumb, I know, but just bear with me. So, okay. F-150, it's supposed to be electric now. It isn't. They're getting a hybrid. It's not a plug-in hybrid. It's a mild hybrid, like That's a 1999 dumb. Prius. Really dumb. 1.2 kilowatt hour battery. Tiny. But hear me out. It has one cool feature, and that is... You can tap that 1.2 kilowatt hour battery with a 30 amp 220 volt inverter. So you could power 220 volt welders and shit straight off the EV system. Okay, that's actually really cool. Really that's cool. That's a really cool work truck at that point. And it will automatically kick on the engine to charge up that high volt battery if it runs too low because it's a mild hybrid. So, like, that's actually pretty neat. That, that's that's kind of cool. That's cool as a work truck. Um, that's it. I mean, it's like I somebody will hack this. I feel like the Tahoe. To go the other way around. Plug I feel. It, plug it. I feel like the Tahoe did that. You could like do, ten years ago. Uh, one hundred and twenty volt outlets. Yeah, nobody's ever done a two twenty volt. Like, yeah, you could charge an EV off of this thing. It's really cool. The two twenty volt. Somebody needs to hack it though. Put a much bigger battery in it and let you plug in the truck too. Because if you, you could know, actually use it as a plug in hybrid. What if? Hear me out. Alibaba buys some of these. Oh, yeah. And when they deliver your Changli to Mecca, they just put it up on a lift in front of you and they just reweld it. Game changer. There you go. That's your market. Perfect. Sell them to Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and on that, that's, that's all I got for this story. Um, <laughs> Short and sweet. Since yeah, no, that, that's fine. That's totally okay. I want to do a car buying challenge because I'm in the process. About to close my house. <clears throat> and right. my down payment that I have is I'm around up to $11,000. Okay. Uh, I want to do an $11,000 collector car challenge. Okay. Because we always talk about all the dumb shit that comes up for sale that we could buy when we yep. have this money that we can't use. Oh, I'm so not tempting. ever, not ever going to buy it, but <clears throat> these are what I would if I did. <laughs> um, and so that it can be anywhere, it, wherever you want. Anywhere on the internet, I chose the world's greatest front wheel drive Isuzu Turbo Impulse RS. Um, or sorry, this is a rear wheel drive one. Plot twist! Ha ha! Because I found a rear wheel drive one that's the same price as a front wheel drive gonna one. I was going to say, this one's older. And this one's way better. Because uh, oh, yeah. this one has the uh, Giorgetto body, it's got the Lotus tuned suspension. This is the rear wheel drive one. It has it's like three cooler. spoke wheels on it. Yeah, this thing's awesome. It was also the featured car in the movie, the awful movie Surf Nazis Must Die, the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, and it's the only good thing about that movie. Um, <laughs> but I honestly really want one. I've wanted one, like, forever. And, yeah, th- th- this is, like, probably the one thing I would buy yeah, in this super price clean. range. I'm surprised. The steering wheel wrap is falling off, but whatever. It's, a, it's an old Azuzu. What do you expect? Look how cool it is! Like the hood opens forward. Yep, like it's like an E30. E30. Yeah, it's like a it's a very wedge shaped E30. This thing is awesome. It looks like it's even intercooled. Uh, yes, the later ones were. Cool. And I oh, th- are those Uniroyal Tiger Paws? You know it. Oh yeah, so baby. So it'll handle just like mm. it's 1987. Perfect. That okay. car, I think that that would be a good use of a, a house down payment, if I wasn't buying a house. Don't worry, Jana. I'm not actually going to do this. 
Because I know better. She would murder you. Oh, no, she wouldn't. Somebody else would. Because I think she would, like, get to my level of petty where it's, like, some sort of weird punishment. I don't know when it's going to happen, oh, but at okay. some point All I'm right. going to have, like, a weird punishment. It'll just be like, I'll be walking along, and, like, a satellite will just fall out of the sky. And I quite kill me immediately, but it'll maim it'll me a maim lot, you. and then I'll probably you'll, bleed you'll out. Terry yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll bleed out and just ruin my life, yeah. so That's what she would do to me. <laughs> keeping on your pretty good decision, I would say, um, I am... I also independently <laughs> chose an under-budget car that happens to be made by a Suzu. Uh, good decision. Um, so I chose an Isuzu Vehicross. Yes. Currently listed for six nine nine five with one hundred and ninety thousand miles, but it's a little bit later one, so it's got the it's big got, twenty it's inch got, wheels. It's got the Camry dimple in it. It does have a Camry dent, and it looks the whole body looks kind of ripply. This thing's done some miles, but I don't really care. Dude, it's, a, it's Via a Via Cross. You know what you're gonna do with that? It's not yellow, which sucks. But no, you know mm-hmm. what you're gonna do with that? That's what? a Via Cross that you're gonna be able to do off-roading stuff in and manual swap it guilt-free yeah. with my Suzu Amigo. But the Momo steering wheel is in okay shape. The Recaro seats are in great shape. You could actually end up being on budget and have the perfect Via Cross. I, I would intend to spend all the rest of the money to make it as Good. I want it. Yeah, which would be removing the dents and installing a manual. But oh, it's even got an engine cold air intake on it. This thing's awesome. I know it's only seven grand. I love that. That's so cool. I All know. right, so I think we found our top tip. You could, if you lowballed both these guys, you could buy both cars for you your could. down payment. But I think <laughs> so. You know, how, like if you're in the twenty thousand dollar range for a classic car, you're probably looking for something that's like an old Japanese collector. Thirty thousand dollars and less. BMW, that's your brand. Like you're you're solid on BMW. Yep. And then you get to like sixty thousand dollars, you can get some V8 Ferraris, but you're probably better off getting a weirdo Porsche. Um, I think that that twelve thousand dollar and less price point. It's a hard price point. Like, I think a Zuzu is your brand, because they've they offer more cool shit in that like twelve grand Unless or less. Unless you want price a Fulvia. Point. That's true. Or a Thama 832. That's true. But I think like. As far as like a solitary brand goes, you feel better buying a car for a little bit less and having some change left over too. Exactly. Those other two cars, they will bleed you dry. Yeah. And you spend all of your money just buying them. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is those are independent cars of that one brand. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if you have like say thirty thousand dollars, you can get just about any good BMW. Oh yeah. And if you have like twenty thousand dollars, you can get just about any good. 80s and older Toyota. Mm-hmm. So, with, I think that the maybe I'll go up to fifteen thousand dollars because you can get a better V across in that. I price might point. buy an EM1 at that point. An EM1, a really nice one. That is a very good point, but then it'll get stolen. It will, so I'll have to keep it inside. But that's the thing. Again, solitary car mm-hmm. in the Honda brand. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that or guys, a GSR even. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You you can a clean get that. GSR. You can get a clean GSR in that price point. Yeah, man. but. I think as far as a solitary brand goes, to offer the most, like, you can get most of their good cars mm-hmm. in this price point. Yep. I would say the best, like, the, the $15,000, $12,000 less price point, that's all Zuzu all day. You can get every cool Zuzu in that price point because Zuzu's made a lot of really cool shit throughout their history. Mm-hmm. And people don't talk about it, and that's why they're so cheap. And you can get a great collector car, from and they're really, pretty reliable, too. They're super reliable. Like, neither of these things really have Achilles heels. No, and you can usually find parts for them, because Azusa has been captive importing their stuff for GM since, like, the 60s. Mm-hmm. So, like, you could really get any era of Azuzu in this price point. Like, you could get an Azuzu, like, a 50s Bellel. You can get a 60s... <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah, don't actually <laughs> do that. But you could, in that price point, you can get a Bellet. You could get a 117. You can get... The Piazza or the Impulse that I showed. You can get a Via Cross, a Trooper. You can get everything. Even good. an Amigo if you're into that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, an Amigo. You can find like a Zuzu Pup, uh, mm-hmm. a Chevy Love Truck. Yep. All those, those are in cool. that price pr- that, those price point. Like, that's the price point. For if you want to have fun and a usable collector, go under get, 15. Yeah, yeah, under 15 grand. Just go get an Isuzu, man. Or <laughs> a couple of them. Yeah, like, that's actually a really. I think that that's our top tip. Like, this is the. The Zuzu price point is that like fifteen thousand dollar less like cheap thrill like you can't beat a Zuzu they're so good so I think that's a great place 
to put our episode. Do we have anything else that nope. we need to mention? That's it. Uh, if Scott if, had joined us, we would have talked about his uh, his EV experience. We I will really wa- talk about this at some point. I really want to want to talk to him about that because I'm actually really curious. The later, the longer this goes, the better it'll get. So it'll be perfect. Cover it later. I'm so excited to see even more plot twist. He currently doesn't have his own vehicle. What? Yep, he doesn't. You, he he already doesn't, owned it. Yeah, he doesn't even have the the Nero right now. He's driving his Element as it's for sale. I thought he had the. He bought the Nero. He took delivery of it. Yeah, he took delivery, but he doesn't have it. Now. He doesn't have it right now. Well, <laughs> it's a long story. <clears throat> I'm really curious. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh, if you didn't hear it at the beginning, uh, Padma Lakshmi uh, has a oh. cookbook that's coming out. It is a uh, encyclopedia of spices. Super cool. Also, Eric found out just entirely how attractive Padma yep. Lakshmi is. Uh, and we were talking about putting smoked paprika on your mac and cheese and how that is she a game changer. She could put smoked paprika changer. on my mac and cheese for sure. Yeah, anybody can. It, this is this is her. I, I'll pull it back up just in case <laughs> the episode edit didn't work. Copy image location. This is very important work. It's God's work that we're doing. There we go. There you go. 49 years old, looking dynamite, good at cooking, all set. Good. Yes. Okay, and there's my folding at home score. So. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, thank you for listening. And now you know to put smoked paprika on your mac and cheese. Do it. Pro it tip. It will change your life. And then eat it in your Isuzu. Yes, eat it in your Isuzu. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Bye, for guys. listening to Carbitrage. <laughs>